If the invites to friends' summer homes are drying up and crowded weekend home shares with strangers or broken down rentals with roommates don't sound appealing, you may want to listen carefully to what our next guests have to say about buying your own summer escape. Tom Postillo and Mickey Conlin are the broker team to the stars, and you may also recognize them from HGTV's Selling New York. They join us now with tips on buying that dream beach house. Welcome, Tom and Mickey. It's so great to have you here. Great to be here. Thank what you. Is the market like right now for second home buyers? Is it strong? It's strong. It's not as strong as it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there's a lot of global turmoil, so a few people are sitting on the sidelines, but uh, that will not dissuade the, no. the impulse buyer. Right, of course not. <laughs> and people always dream about that summer escape, that beach house, and it's important to remember that it doesn't have to be a compound in the Hamptons. You can find a well placed cottage somewhere that can make you happy, correct? Absolutely. There are all ranges that we can we can discuss. So what are some of the things you need to keep in mind if you are a buyer? You say first you need to know what exactly you're looking for, right? F find your foundation? Sure. Don't, a, a lot of people make the mistake, uh, it's, it's sort of the timeshare mistake. They go on vacation, they're in Mexico, they find something, they love the place, they buy a timeshare. Right. How often does that really go well? So the same thing applies to uh, beach communities, vacation communities. You spend a few weekends with friends, you decide you absolutely love it, and you buy it. It's like going to the supermarket hungry. Right. You don't necessarily make the best decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so do you recommend perhaps renting in a community first and then buying? That's always a good idea. I mean, you, you know, it, like a test drive, right. try before you buy, you know, make sure that you really, that you like what that uh, community is all about, what is the infrastructure when the summer is over, you know. I mean, oh, so visit thing. after Labor Day, perhaps? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Because it, trying to understand what value the property may have for you in an off season, right. does the town shut down? Is there the possibility of renting it out to someone else while you're not using it? Mm -hmm. Or is it some place you might like to go and then you find out Everybody's gone. There is no community. You can't buy a half gallon of milk. Absolutely. So then you should consider, do you want to be near the beach? Do you want to be in the woods, right? A lake, right? What is the environment that you most value? Right. And they all they all come with different different uh, sets of maintenance, you know, as well. Ah, so, you know, like maintenance. Let's yeah. talk about that. Oh, that. Salt <laughs> right. Salt water. <laughs> right. You're going to do a lot of painting touch-ups ah. with salt water, you know. So the, the, these are things to, uh, to keep in mind as well. And, and a cautionary tale about buying waterfront property. If you have the means to do it, terrific. But don't just look at the purchase price. Don't look, just look at the maintenance. There are some uh, hidden dangers. We have friends who bought a property on the beach in the Hamptons. Mm. It was kind of a fixer-upper. They discovered that the insurance for the property, the flood insurance, was $60,000 a year. Oh, my goodness. So oh that's goodness. just the uh, icing on the cake. Absolutely. So I guess if you, if you have money to burn and a house on the shore, if there's a flood and it goes away, doesn't kill you. But maybe don't look at that property as an, an investment you need down the road. <laughs> right. Probably not. Right? It's just a fun house. It's just a fun just house. Just for fun and memories. And you say you can save a little money then if you look for something a few blocks away from the beach, right? Sure. Yeah. Consider consider how you'll be using it. Will you have a car out there? Is it what is your commute going to be like? Will you be using it in off season? Do you necessarily want your kids that close to the water? Sometimes it's better to be buffered so right. you have better control. Uh, and that's again why it's a great idea to rent Before. for a season or two mm -hmm. to really get a sense of the community and say, we want to be a part of this. And are there some communities that you guys can point to in the New York sort of tri-state area that you like, that you feel are a little undervalued right now, that people could get some good summer escape deals? Yeah, we're very excited about the North Shore of Long Island. Mm -hmm. Very ex so excited that we're building a house there. I, I heard that's that's great. It's very popular now, right? Yeah. Well, there's something you know here in the New York area. Everybody flocks to the Hamptons because it's what we know, mm -hmm. and that could easily be a three and a half hour commute mm -hmm. in traffic. Yes. And and if you have to turn around for some reason and you don't have the luxury of spending your entire summer out there, if you have to come back to the city for work, yes. that's a very long schlep. But there just for the weekend. Just correct? for the weekend. Yes. Yes. There are wonderful communities on the North Shore of Long Island that are within an hour's drive of the city, and you avoid a lot of that summer traffic. So that's really something to keep in mind as well. The commute, very important. Oh, yes. <laughs> Unless you have that helicopter. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's also another dream, but that's for another segment, that's how right. to get the helicopter. Tom and Mickey, thank you so much for that. Thank, thank you. you.